Hello boys and girls, welcome to our new unit called Clap Your Hands, Stomp Your Feet. We are going to be worshiping God throughout this entire unit. And today, we're gonna start off with making a clapping rhythm. Let's see if you can do this rhythm at home. Ready? Can you do that? Awesome job, boys and girls. Now, why is this our theme? It's because clapping and stomping are two of the things the Bible instructs us to do when we worship God. The Bible tells us that we should worship God in response to what He has done for us. Do you remember last week we talked about what worship is? Worship is showing God we love Him because He is the most important of all. Well, the Bible actually tells us ways to worship God. Let's look at our worship graphic and go over some of the ways we talked about last week. We can sing a song about God, share or help someone, read the Bible, or tell someone how amazing God is. This week, we're going to learn about how to worship God by laughing, clapping, singing, shouting, and giving thanks. While we do that, we're going to be learning about what God did in the life of David. The Bible tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. It would be easy to say that David was one of the greatest worshipers of God of all time. He danced, wrote songs, sang, shouted, gave thanks. He did all of it. Let's start learning about him today. I happen to really like spaghetti for dinner. Do you like spaghetti for dinner? It's one of my favorite things. So I have some spaghetti here because I love spaghetti. Now, what would I put on my spaghetti? Mmm, meatballs, maybe some spaghetti sauce, Parmesan cheese. Mmm, yes, it smells amazing. What kinds of things do you put on your spaghetti? I bet you put tomato sauce and meatballs and cheese too, right? Probably so. Now, another thing that I love is ice cream. Do you like ice cream sundaes? What do you put on your ice cream sundae? Well, I know I happen to love whipped cream, Mm, yes, chocolate syrup, sprinkles, love sprinkles, and I even like to put a cherry on top. What about you? Okay, now because I love both of these things, what if I chose to put these together? Oh, we can have a spaghetti sundae. <gasps> Let's see, can add some whipped cream. Amazing. <gasps> what about some syrup? Chocolate syrup is the best. Okay. Oh, sprinkles. You gotta have lots of sprinkles. Lots of sprinkles. And, you know, it's just not complete unless we have a cherry. Or two. All right. That's looking pretty good, y'all. Do we think that this spaghetti sundae is going to be good? I don't know, because some things just don't go together. I'm not really sure that I would ever eat that. But today, we are going to hear a story about David. David was the youngest boy of a big family. He was a shepherd too. He was the last person that anyone would have expected to become a king. Like spaghetti and ice cream, David and being a king just did not go together. But God chose David to be king. Let's learn our main point together today. It is to laugh <laughs> because God chooses surprising people. Long ago, there was a man named Samuel. Can you say Samuel? Awesome job. Samuel was a man of God. God used prophets like Samuel to anoint new kings for God's people, uh, which was Israel. God would tell the prophet who should be king, and then the prophet would go and anoint him as king. The first man Samuel anointed king was Saul. Saul was everything that you would think a king should be. 
He was bigger and taller than everyone else. He was good looking and most people liked him. At first, he seemed like he was going to be a great king. He listened to God and he defeated Israel's enemies. But then Saul started doing things that were not pleasing to God. He disobeyed God's commands. He did evil things and he led God's people to do evil as well. Saul did not have a heart for God. Israel needed a new king. One day, God told Samuel, I have rejected Saul as king. Go to the house of a man named Jesse in Bethlehem. I want to make one of Jesse's sons the king instead of Saul. Samuel was afraid. Samuel knew King Saul would kill him if the king heard he had anointed one of Jesse's sons. But even though he was afraid, Samuel obeyed. He went because God told him to go. So Samuel went on a journey to the town of Bethlehem. This is where Jesse and all of his sons lived. When Samuel arrived at Jesse's house, he noticed one of Jesse's sons, Eliab. Eliab was tall and impressive. He looked the way a king should look. So Samuel thought, this must be him. This must be the one God has chosen to be the next king. Let's read what happened next from the Bible. You can open your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, or you can follow along on the screen. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. This is amazing. God is saying that it's not our appearance that matters. God doesn't see the same things people see. God chooses differently than people choose. Let's repeat our main point today. Laugh <laughs> because God chooses surprising people. Eliab was not the one chosen by God to be king, but Jesse had lots of sons, so he just started to bring them out to meet Samuel. Jesse brought out his second son, and he was rejected. <coughs> then his third son was brought out, rejected. <coughs> Fourth son, rejected. <coughs> Fifth son, rejected. <coughs> Sixth son, rejected. <coughs> Seventh son, rejected. <coughs> Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Are these all the sons you have? Jesse answered, there is still the youngest, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. I will not even sit down until he gets here. So Jesse went and got the youngest son out of the field with the sheep. The youngest son was named David. David had no idea that Samuel was looking to find a new king. David was not expecting to become a king this day. But when he came in, Samuel knew he was the one. Samuel took David and he anointed him as king. And then the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon him. Nobody thought David would be king. He wasn't particularly impressive. He wasn't even the first pick in his own family. But God chose David. Let's repeat our main point again. Laugh! <laughs> God chooses surprising people. David was a surprising choice. But do you know who else was a surprising choice? Jesus. Jesus came from the family tree of David. Jesus was just as surprising as David. He came from a small town in the middle of nowhere. Do you remember the name of that town? Yes, that's right. It was Bethlehem, the same town as David came from. Jesus' family weren't rich. No one would have chosen Jesus to be our king. Jesus wasn't particularly good looking. The prophet Isaiah says he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. But Jesus is our king. 
God has chosen to save us through Jesus. Isn't that amazing? So how can we respond in worship? Remember, worship is showing God we love Him because He is the most important of all. We don't have to be pretty or handsome or strong to respond to God because God graciously chooses the people we'd least expect. We can simply laugh with joy and give thanks with a heart of trust. The psalm for today says it this way, Psalm 126, verses 2 and 3. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Will you pray with me so that we can thank God for choosing surprising people? Father God, we thank you for our time together today. We thank you, God, for um, teaching us about David and how you can choose surprising people to do amazing things. Father God, help us to listen to you so that we can hear the surprising things that you may ask us to do too. Help us to look at people's hearts, not at their appearances, just the way that you look at our heart. We love you, God. Amen. See you next time.